name is Jill Remington Love, and I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development for Salt Lake City. This means that I work closely with Mayor Becker and the rest of his cabinet <coughs> members on issues related to planning, building and housing, transportation, economic development, arts, civic engagement, and more. This portfolio is pretty diverse, so it's rare that my team and I get to work on a project that can potentially touch and have a real impact on each of our issues, issue areas. T today's announcement does, and it's a result of over a year's worth of collaborative hard work. That's why I'm particularly proud to represent my team at the podium today. Our program this morning will be short and sweet. We will have three speakers, two of whom we will introduce in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to welcome Mayor Becker to the podium. As many of you know, Mayor Becker is in his eighth year as our Salt Lake City Mayor and has been a champion for economic development, education, and improving quality of life in Salt Lake City. Today's events fall squarely into the Mayor's livability agenda. So without further ado, Mayor Ralph Becker. Well, good morning, Jill. Thank you for that introduction. And of course, many thanks for all that you have done and, and continue to do uh, for our city. Um, I know that you were invited here under some mysterious terms. And now that I have all of you here, I'm slightly tempted to take advantage of it and spend the morning talking about air quality. <laughs> but I think our real topic will be perhaps a bit more exciting for many of you. We're here today to announce a project that my team has been working on for over a year now. This project has the potential to catalyze our already strong economy. It will help create jobs. It could convince established companies to dig up their roots and to move to Salt Lake City. It could be a springboard for local innovation, education, and technology. And it's also exciting because it's one of the largest investments a private company has made in our city in years. So without further ado, I'm thrilled to announce that Google Fiber will be coming to Salt Lake City. For those of you who don't know what fiber is, let me explain it this way. The most recent global state of the internet report said that on average the fastest broadband speeds Utahns have access to is 59.6 megabits per second. Now that doesn't seem too bad. In fact, we're ranked seventh in the nation. And it means that if folks are willing to pay for it, they can probably browse the web without facing that dreaded buffer wheel. But Google Fiber offers connections up to 1,000 megabits per second, which will bring Salt Lake City up to the speed with major technology hubs like Seoul and Hong Kong. And this leap in speeds will open up an entirely new universe of exciting possibilities for Salt Lake City residents. This was the point my team and I hammered home with the Google team when we were pitched to bring Google Fiber here. If you build us a network, Salt Lake City residents will respond with a surge of innovation and ingenuity, the likes of which you rarely have seen in your Silicon Valley headquarters. And I'm so excited to see this happen. I'm thrilled for our youth who will be able to explore effortlessly Mars, the Mars surface in 3D, or to study the intricacy of Van Gogh's brushstrokes without leaving their homes. I'm excited about this for our amazing entrepreneurs who will have the opportunity to explore and develop entirely new ways of using the web with gigabit speeds. I'm excited about what this means for our transportation and air quality initiatives. Because w won't telecommuting be so much easier when you can upload files in a matter of seconds or attend a pixel-related video conference? I'm excited about it for the direct effect in our economy, because Google's contractors will be hiring local workers to install thousands of miles of brand new fiber optic cables throughout Salt Lake City. 
And perhaps more than any of this, I'm excited that this could mean amazing things for increasing access to affordable internet service throughout our community. I'm proud to say that my team has already begun to explore what our city can do to make, a broadband, uh, to make broadband a difference in closing the digital divide through digital literacy programs and partnerships. Of course, before we can get any of this, Google still has to build the network. So while this is a key milestone on the path to world-class internet access, there's still a lot of work to be done. Devin Baer, who's going to be on stage here in a minute from Google, will talk to you about what to expect from fiber here in the next few months. But before I pass the mic, I want to express my deepest thanks to some folks in the city who have really been doing remarkable work tirelessly over this past year to bring fiber, fiber to Salt Lake City. I first want to start with our city council, who has responded incredibly, uh, incredibly well to the demands on their schedules and on their agendas to take action uh, in an expeditious way. So thank you to our city council. And then there are people on our, in our city team who literally have been working night and day and weekends. I know because I get their, their, their connections and questions. Uh, and particularly, I just want to identify a few, while so many could certainly be, uh, be noted. Noel Walkinshaw, um, certainly Jessica <laughs> Thiering, and Brian Roberts, who literally, uh, as I said, have been working uh, day and night uh, to make this day possible. And then on, on my staff, uh, really the incredible uh, team that has also just responded whenever there's been a need so quickly. Uh, particularly, I want to note uh, Dave Everett. I'm sure Dave is here. Um, so Dave. Uh, and Jill, who, um, who uh, I'm seeing this today and who's been working uh, as well just day and night to make this happen. So um, thank, thank all of you. I know that so many of you have been working so hard on this uh, in the city and with, the, with the, our Google teammates, and it really has been a team effort uh, to make this day possible. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Devin Baer, who is the Associate City Manager for Google Fiber here in Salt Lake City. Devin's originally from Utah, from Alpine. We'll excuse him for that. Uh, and he attended BYU, and we'll, so we'll have to excuse him for that as well. <laughs> uh, he's been working with Google for several years. Uh, he most recently ran sales and operations for Google Fiber down, down the road in Provo. And now he's going to help manage the team that Google will hire here in Salt Lake City. So please uh, welcome uh, for us today, uh, Devin Baer. Devin, thank you. Morning, everybody, and thank you, Mayor Becker, for sharing the news. The Google Fiber team could not be more excited to bring Fiber to Salt Lake City. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about what Fiber is and what it might mean for Salt Lake residents. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank Mayor Becker and his staff for their hard work to make this announcement happen. Building a fiber network is a major infrastructure project. In fact, over the next few years, we're going to be installing enough fiber optic cables to stretch all the way to Canada. In order to get ready for a project of that magnitude, cities have often spent years planning and preparing. But Salt Lake City, your leaders rose to the challenge in just one year. They brought passion, commitment, and dedication to each of our planning conversations. And every step of the way, they were motivated by the goal of bringing fast, affordable internet connectivity to the residents of Salt Lake and small businesses. So we all owe a big thank you to Mayor Becker and his team, including, as was mentioned, Noel Walkingshaw and Jessica Thiesing, who helped spearhead this effort. Without your hard work, we wouldn't be standing here today. As the mayor mentioned in his remarks, Google Fiber offers crystal clear HD TV service, along with an ultra fast internet connection that's up to 1,000 megabits per second. That kind of fast internet is awesome, especially this time of year when it helps you stream the Utes playing in the Sweet 16. 
That's coming from a Cougar fan, by the way. Yes. But even more importantly, truly great things can happen when a community upgrades to a gigabit network. In Kansas City, Google Fiber helped catalyze growth in a new local startup culture. In Austin, internet access has gotten faster and cheaper thanks to a more competitive market, making it easier and affordable for more people to get online. And just down the road in Provo, we've heard a wide variety of stories of how fiber customers are using their connections. One local geneticist is exploring ways to use Google Fiber to transmit terabytes of genome data for critical care research. And several families have told us that fiber has changed the way they think about bandwidth. Instead of fighting over evening time internet usage, large families can all be online doing homework, streaming videos, looking up recipes, and sending emails effortlessly. Bringing fiber to Provo has also given us the chance to create strong community partnerships with local organizations like the Provo City Housing Authority, Centro Hispano, which works with local Hispanic immigrants, Mountainland Head Start, and many more. In fact, we're thrilled that one of our partner organizations, the United Way of Utah County, could join us here today. You'll hear from them in just a few minutes. And now that we'll be bringing fiber to this end of the valley too, we know we can expect great things from Salt Lake City. As a hub of creativity, technology, and one of the best places to live and do business in the US, this is the perfect community to show us what's possible with a gig. We've talked to dozens of business leaders, educators, entrepreneurs, and community organizations, and it's clear to us that folks here are ready to do transformative things with affordable, fast internet connectivity. But before we can get to that point, we have some more work to do. Building a brand new network is a huge infrastructure investment, which will take hundreds of construction crews and installers. That is why our first step is to plan where this fiber needs to go. We're going to spend several months completing a detailed design of the network, then once we're finished with our blueprints, we'll begin construction. We'll have more information on how and when you'll be able to sign up for fiber once construction is underway. But for now, we can say that people all across Salt Lake City, north, south, east, and west, will have the opportunity to sign up for Google Fiber. We'll build our network and install customers wherever there is collective demand for our service. In order to, get, in order to design and build this network, we'll be hiring a local team of Google employees who will live and work here in the Salt Lake area. We'll also be hiring a few folks whose job it will be to initiate partnerships and build relationships with the community, business, and civic leaders. As Mayor Becker mentioned earlier, I'll be helping to lead this team, and I'm excited to get to know many of you over the coming months and years. I hope you'll come up and introduce yourself after our event today. And speaking of continuing to work with the community, our next speaker is someone who I've been blessed to get to know through our Google, deployment down, Google Fiber deployment down in Provo. Bill Holterstrom has been serving the Utah Valley through charities and nonprofits for 30 years. Currently, he is the president and CEO of the United Way of Utah County, where he has pioneered several new ways to use a gig that are good for the community, and has developed new partnerships that help, people bring, help get people online for the first time. Bill is here today to talk about the importance of connectivity in a community and to share some firsthand experiences he's had with Google Fiber. Please join me in welcoming Bill to the stage. Good morning. What a pleasure to be here on this exciting event here. First, congratulations, Salt Lake City, and congratulations, Mayor. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about one of our community centers that's been partnering with Google Fiber. Our South Franklin Community Center in one of our more challenged neighborhoods is a community center that you'll find members of virtually every age, ethnicity, and income in the center. As you walk into this center, you find this contagious environment of curiosity. You'll find people buzz using the internet for the first time, people who have never used it before, volunteers assisting, seniors who have language um, challenges separate from English who are all of a sudden accessing a world they've never seen before. As Devin mentioned, I'm Bill Holterstrom, the CEO of United Way of Utah County, and most people would not see that as a, a tying into technology. But let me tell you this amazing partnership we have with Google. As United Way here, as United Way in this community does as well, focuses on education, income, and health. Our Google partners become our friends and colleagues as we work to better our communities. Let me just tell you about how we've had a chance to work with this Google Fiber team and how fast the internet has made a difference for us. Directly, of course, Google has been very involved with our community center, providing Chromebooks and internet connections, providing us with students who can help teach digital inclusion activities. Beyond that, they've even 
dirtied their clothes and done the yard work for us in the center. Just an amazing hard work group. But they've also donated technology for us to do video conferencing with our partners around the community and around the globe. And provided free gigabit connection to us and many of our nonprofit partners. In addition to this, we've been able to discover so much about internet and how it can help those who do not necessarily have access. The, the digital divide, those who may not have even seen the internet before. Let me tell you about a product we had in our center. We're using community connectors, or I should, let me say that, community leaders program from Google. We had a volunteer who was doing digital training. There was a woman who would come and visit this class and just kind of sit on the sidelines. The student volunteer named Layla was just teaching classes little by little. And one day, a woman came up and started looking closer and closer. As she started looking, the, woman started ta the volunteer started talking to this sweet woman. She started discovering that she was interested in knitting. And pretty soon, the volunteer brought up an, a YouTube on some knitting skills and technologies, something beyond my world of understanding. Beyond that, this volunteer started connecting her. This, this woman would come back week after week to learn more about what she could learn on the internet. If we work this together, this internet can, can change the world, can build bridges where we never had them before. Let me share with you a vision that we have that we're piloting now where we have volunteers who are either sitting at home or in the workplace that are tutoring students in hard to reach elementary schools. Can you picture a world where our seniors who may be homebound can now share their talents and resources by sharing those talents as a tutor in an elementary school? Together we really can create a divide, we can bridge this divide and help have access to all of our low income residents, all of our new immigrant residents who will be able to connect to jobs and work activities and become a part of our community. So congratulations Salt Lake City on joining this fiber world. We look forward to be exciting partners with you as we work together in building bridges throughout our community. Let me turn the time now back to Jill as she will finish up our program. Thank you to all of our speakers, and again, a heartfelt thanks to the folks on the Community and Econo Economic Development team and to the many other departments within the city who worked so hard to make today happen. This concludes our formal program, but before everyone gets up to leave, I have some instructions for reporters who'd like to get one-on-one -on -one interviews with our speakers. Our speakers will be available for individual media interviews and photos here on stage, and we will make sure to accommodate all of you. At noon, we will then move out to the front of the building to the Google Fiber van for any additional photos and interview opportunities. Please find either Austin Isbell or Kelly Fratto for any additional requests. Thank you. <laughs>